Hey everyone, this is Jared from minijunkie.com. Thanks for joining me for what I consider my first serious painting tutorial video. Uh, but having said that, as my first painting tutorial video, I'm going to be doing sort of the voiceover separately from what I filmed. And at times it's going to look really weird compared to what I'm saying. And I'm still kind of figuring this stuff out, so bear with me. Um, so yeah, you can see I was actually talking when I recorded this, but whatever. So basically I'm going to be showing you um, the process I'm using right now to paint the Necron army I'm working on, uh, I'm doing it in a bone color, um, starting from a base, which you see here, a base coat of Tamiya Desert Yellow. Uh, that's all I've done on this model so far, so we're going to be picking it up from there. Um, and I'm at, you know, at this point, I'm basically pointing out some of the areas where I missed and I need to kind of go back a little bit. Uh, but what I'm going to be doing uh, first is hitting it with some bolt gun because uh, what happens is with airbrushing you can just work backwards sort of messy to clean and I'll put on some bolt gun on the guns and some of the larger things like those uh, the engines in the back and the main gun and then what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll clean that up with the base coat and then I'm going to hit it with the highlight of Menoth uh, I'm actually keeping up with this uh, Menoth <laughs> base uh, P3 Menoth base sorry guys uh, yeah, so I'm going to be using that to apply the highlights wherever it's appropriate. Um, real quick, you know, obviously I'm keeping this pretty casual and I'll, I'll get better. I wasn't even sure where the heck to put the camera. My philosophy when I paint anything right now is I don't have a lot of time. I've got three kids and a crazy job. So I'm trying to go fast and get a result that I'm happy with on the table. I am not going for Golden Demon stuff here. So you'll see, <laughs> and it's a mess. You'll see me kind of cutting a lot of corners and just saying, you know, good, good enough. And I tend to focus very much on what people notice the most when they're looking at the model. So right now what I'm doing is just airbrushing on bolt gun metal. <clears throat> what I like to do is with the bolt gun, I am going to be going back and applying some detailed bolt gun areas with a regular brush, um, such as on the Necron drivers themselves and things like that. But to save time, uh, I like to, you know, airbrush the bolt gun onto the biggest parts like the engines and the guns and things like that. Bolt gun goes on quite nicely. Um, it, you can't really tell in the, in the, from the footage right now, but you know, it almost looks wet, but it actually goes on really nice and dries fairly quickly. And you get this really nice, smooth metallic finish. Um, <clears throat> you don't get any clumping or, you know, streaking or anything like that, that you can sometimes get when you're using a brush. Moving over to the main body of the barge, we're going to be uh, using the bolt gun <clears throat> again to paint, you know, the, basically I'm painting the engines, um, spraying away, what you can do, you know, the trick with airbrushing is use the position of the model, which you have full control over pretty much, to help, you know, direct where the paint does or does not go. So for example, you know, spray away from the body kind of on an angle, you're still going to get great coverage on that engine, but you're spraying kind of away from the main body and what I'm pointing out there is that <clears throat> some bolt gun did get on uh, like the round parts of the engine and things like that but it's so minimal that I'm just gonna go back after the fact and clean that up so it's no big deal um, it'll be very easy to clean up so uh, the trade-off is that it's much you know the speed of being able to quickly paint a few of the bolt gun areas with the airbrush uh, and then clean them up as I'm already basically fixing the bolt uh, the base coat uh, is worth it and, and ultimately, you know, working with the airbrush tends to be a, a matter of get some, get a nice effect, make a bit of a mess, but then clean up the mess and end up with something that looks really good. I'm using the airbrush here to, uh, you know, I'm super lazy at this point. I'm using the airbrush to apply some bulk onto the spine areas that connect the uh, the two drivers and, and or the gunner. And the driver to the ship and you know that's going to get a little overspray on the middle of the body that I'm going to be able to fix up no problem using it to spray uh, some of that spine that goes up in on the inside here um, you know what what I'm doing is it just I'm ultimately going to have to I'm saying that word a lot I'm going to have to go back and paint that with the brush anyway but it you know just saves a little bit of time to give it that additional or initial coat 
here I am uh, basically painting the gun underneath same same sort of philosophy as the guns uh, the main guns and you can see them in the background there they've got a pretty nice coat of uh, bolt gun that's dried now it's really nice and smooth so I'm using a bolt gun on there and um, at this point I think I'm done so through the magic of video editing I have cleaned out the airbrush with cleaner and I've switched over to the Tamiya Desert Yellow using that to clean up uh, the base of the main gun where I might have got a little bit of bulk and overspray nothing crazy and then I'm coming on to the the main ship again I'm just using it where I think I might have you know not get gotten the kind of coverage I want you can see I'm just kind of going in the in the crevices there now there's an important point right there if you if you get too close or you get a little bit of too much spray and it kind of puddles or whatever use your finger man like it's not it hasn't dried yet it's very quick to just brush it off with your finger and then just go right back over with the airbrush get a nice clean surface you're not going to get you know it wipes off so smooth you won't get any weird like streakiness or fingerprints uh, you have to do it quickly before the stuff starts to dry but it's it's totally doable um, so yeah my fingers one of my major tools in painting a uh, little known secret um, so basically yeah still going still going through um, using the desert yellow to clean up anywhere where I got a bit of overspray with the bolt gun and the thing is it's easier now to avoid the bolt gun and just spray the yellow where it needs to go to clean that up a little bit of extra work here on the drivers I kinda missed you know underneath their shoulder pads and stuff like that At this point, basically what I'm doing is looking over the model, finding little spots where I feel like I didn't quite get the coverage. With with the airbrush, it's very easy. Um, if you go too quickly at some points, you're going to get not quite the full opacity. You know, opacity is that the word uh, that you're looking for? So you you want to go back over that a bit more, and that that happens a lot. So basically, I'll almost always spend some time just going over it and finding those spots and and patching them up uh, using the desert yellow. Okay, so now what we're doing is uh, I've, I've switched over to the P3 Menoth base uh, and very, very lightly spraying it on as a highlight. Um, the thing that's great about airbrushing is, um, you know, if you're applying very little pressure to your, you know, you can use a fair bit of air and then just pull back gently on the, the trigger to let out as much or as little paint as you want. And by applying the very thin coat first and then building it up towards where you want it to be bright, um, you know, you're kind of getting that nice sort of instant blend. Um, it takes practice a little bit, but it's not as hard as it sounds. Um, it's actually pretty straightforward. So, you know, where you want this to be brightest, you you put more layers, just like kind of like with real, you know, regular painting. What I'm doing again, I'm not trying to win a golden demon with this thing. I'm not being super precise. I'm basically painting this because, you know, where where do I see the light hitting it? Where do I see people seeing it the most? what makes sense for the for the you know nice highlights to appear um, but I'm not again not trying to be real precise uh, you know at times I'm literally just spraying it kind of in the general vicinity of where I want a highlight to be in this case you can see on the front I'm kind of painting those those forward panels uh, kind of where they stick out from the ship you know still trying to follow the basic principles of where the light would hit is where I'm putting putting the highlights um, you know brightening up those you know the outside panels of the curve going for some nice contrast and some nice effect here um, coming around to the sides um, spraying the edges here same same exact philosophy going brighter multiple coats um, towards the front of the ship and I apologize right now that a lot of the time my hand is in the way of what you're supposed to be seeing uh, I'm still getting used to this I'm not really sure where I should be putting this camera without completely wrecking it with my paint what I'm doing there is you know with the drivers I pretty much just painted down on top of them so as if the light was shining down on top um, not being precise I'm gonna be cleaning it all up with with bolt gun with washes with detailing um, but just basically spraying you know the tops of their thighs the tops of their feet the tops of their shoulder pads you know the shoulder pads is where 
people are going to see a lot of and, and it's going to catch a lot of the light so I've kind of gone brighter there and now what we're going to try to do is you know highlight that panel I'm pointing at um, without getting too much into the, the crevice there so that you've got that you know retain that shadow in the crevice same thing building up nice light you know highlight layers not going too heavy or too thick too quickly um, and what I'm doing there is kind of trying to use an angle again spraying on an angle so that um, I'm kind of retaining the darkness in, in the crevice there, but but hitting a bit of that that uh, pillar that's kind of sticking out and giving that a bit of a highlight. Highlighting the tops of the balls, for lack of a better word here. Um, leaving the bottom still sort of that desert yellow. On the bottom paneling part, brightening it up towards the you know where it's farthest from the hull because where it's close to the hull you'd have the most shadow very simple stuff same thing spraying on the the tops of those balls um, it's pretty easy if you get close and you don't let too much paint flow at once uh, pretty easy to control it keep it just on <laughs> I could really make this sound silly but anyway uh, pretty easy to avoid the bulk on parts of the engines and just get the paint where you want it to be Starting to work on the backs of those panels, same theory, uh, brightest towards where they're furthest away from the from the spine and from that hull. Um, not completely perfect highlighting, and that's okay. This is just to play uh, for playing. What I'm doing there on those joint parts is just kind of coming at it again with a zenithal approach, where I I use the natural um, curves of that piece to to create shadows by spraying down across it. A lot of the time, again, it's all about the angle that you're hitting a piece. You can do some really, really sharp highlights just by hitting something at the right angle. Highlighting the other back panel, same thing, brighter towards the edges, doing those joint pieces. And here's a good part to talk about the thing I talked about in my previous video about airbrushing is that you get this tip drive situation where your needle's going to build up a lot of paint on the end of it. And in particular, that's going to happen with the lighter colors like this um, Menoth color. It doesn't have, you know, some colors it hardly happens at all because they have, they're very thin. And some it's like almost constant. What I'm doing there is pulling on the back uh, nut that holds the needle and dr it draws the needle all the way out. And then I just blast the paint really hard so it just kind of clears that nozzle out and I start to get better flow again couldn't really see it and I apologize for that but basically I was pulling the needle all the way back and letting the air flow and just basically blasting some paint out so back to highlighting this panel here same story maybe I'll stop talking for a minute let you watch I think I was trying to say something about the spine but basically yeah you know leaving it a little darker at the bottom of the spine you know just very very thin coat that doesn't completely obscure the desert yellow and then going thicker and more opaque towards the top and that's just going to give you naturally brighter at the top and right now again not worrying about any of the details not worrying about oh man I'm getting paint in those those cracks and deep in you know in the patterns and in the symbols and all that stuff who cares I mean the point is you're going to be coming back, I'm going to be coming back with a brush and doing all kinds of detail work to to add to this. So same thing as I did on the first part of that spine on the very back, except I'm going sort of on the sides, matching sort of the dark to light pattern that I've established on the very back. And giving it the usual once over. See, I missed a spot on one side of the back lower panel. So I'll apply some highlights to that. Again, not worrying whatsoever about covering up some of those parts that are going to be metal later. And what's happening is while I'm spraying this, I am getting paint on the bolt gun engines and the gun a bit. And that's fine because what I'm going to do, I'm coming back with bolt gun details anyway. And I'm just going to tidy up anywhere where I got paint on the bolt gun.
same thing uh, coming over to the main gun and just real quick highlight on the you know on the mounting piece that attaches the gun to the platform not trying to be precise not trying to be amazingly golden demon quality here just throwing throwing some brightness around the outer ring where it's going to be most visible when it's mounted on on the barge so folks that's part one uh, it's going to be a long video already I apologize um, I'm gonna basically switch over on part two and start doing some brushwork and some other tricks uh, that I want to show you so I you know I'm gonna learn to try and squeeze these whole videos into 15 minutes next time uh, but for now I'm gonna go film sort of the additional parts where I'm gonna add some weathering and some detailing and uh, really start to bring out what we're looking for in this barge thanks for joining me